It's the Spooky Show with Willie. <laughs> Greetings, ghouls, and welcome to the Spooky Show. The Spooky Show. I'm your host, Willie Muse, coming to you from the Void of Unimaginable Horrors. And I'm so excited to bring you guys my first episode of my new show. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but I think we're about to make some magic here. And speaking of which, you know who else makes magic? I I'm not proud of that transition, but it did get my point across because today we're talking about the mother of all monsters, witches. For the record, Draculas are the father of all monsters, and Frankensteins are like the cool uncle, but those are matters for a different episode. Today we're talking about witches, but before we can do that, we should probably talk about what this show's all about, because you don't know, you stupid idiot. For as long as I can remember, I've been obsessed with everything spooky and scary, but I've never really known much about it other than the fact that I think it's really, really cool. Uh, then one day I made a deal with someone who will go nameless, the devil and ended up in this horrible uh, infinite void of non-existence um, with a lot of free time on my hands. So I figured, why not use that free time, do a little research about the stuff that I like, and maybe make a cool show out of it. So that's what I did. And with that in mind, uh, let's get to answering the question of the day, which is, where do witches come from? <laughs> now, a lot of you are probably saying, uh, there are lots of types of witches, Willie. And to you, I say two things. One, don't you ever talk to me like that again. And two, I know that there are a lot of types of witches and that the word witch means a lot of things to a lot of people. That said, I'm only focused on one very specific type of witch, and that is the very westernized stereotype of the old hag that you see around Halloween. Um, and if you, for some reason, don't know what that is, I will give you a brief rundown of it now. The type of witch I'm focused on today is usually, if not always, female, and she's usually an older kind of female. Uh, she makes brews and rides around on broomsticks, and she wears a pointy hat, which, I don't care what anyone says, looks good as hell on me. While I'm sure you guys are all very familiar with that version of the witch myth, I'm also pretty positive that you've never actually seen one in real life for real, and that's because, unfortunately, I don't think that that version of the witch actually ever existed in history. That said, I do think that there is a very real monster that actually existed that gave us our modern day perception of the witch. And that monster's name was Ignorance. Ooh. I don't know why I'm making jokes. People were killed for this stuff. Moving on. Even the most base level research on witches, which is the kind of research that I did, will tell you that a historical witch is defined less by their pointy hat and more by the fact that someone else thought that they were evil and should be put to death for it. Uh, if you've ever worked in an office, you know that people like to put blame on other people and witches were the perfect target for that. For starters, witchcraft was condemned by the Bible, which, uh, back then was the only justification you needed to start burning people alive at the stake. Uh, also, by their very nature, witches are seemingly capable of any sort of atrocity. So if an atrocity does happen, it's not hard to blame it on a witch. You just go, oh, they used their magic and now the plague happened. This is all to say that witches were basically just history's scapegoats. They were an easy answer to a lot of very complicated issues that people faced every day back then. It would be like, Today, if, I don't know, we had like a president who, instead of doing anything, just kept saying that like immigrants are bad. And instead of trying to make meaningful changes, just like kept talking about building a wall to keep them out. Because putting all the blame on one group of people is a lot easier than accepting that there's a lot of complicated issues out there with no easy answers. Thankfully, we're obviously far too evolved for anything like that to happen today. Moving on. Witches were basically just the enemy, but they were also an enemy that super duper duper didn't exist, so that kind of complicated things for people. That said, they still wanted to place their blame somewhere, and instead of doing the, the smart thing and admitting that witches weren't real, they instead decided to approximate as best they could what they thought witches 
would look like from people who did actually exist and place their blame on them. And this is where you get the concept of a witch hunt. I won't go too deep into them because I think that they deserve their own episodes, but I will say that back then witch hunts were a huge deal to the point that the Malleus Maleficarum, I don't know if I'm saying that right, was the second biggest selling book after the Bible for over 200 years. And that was basically just a manual on how to put an innocent woman to death. So, you know, if you're looking for a new read, people were amped as hell to fuck them up a witch, so they started looking for any reason that they could to justify calling someone else out. And this is where that list of traits I showed you earlier comes back into play. So when we get that back up, whoop, and we'll take it one by one, starting from the obvious, the fact that women are predominantly female. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret, and it's going to shock you. But here it is. History was not kind to women. <laughs> It is sad, but in no way shocking to realize that the reason witches are predominantly depicted as female is because females were the majority of people being accused of witchcraft back in the day. Accusing someone of witchcraft basically just meant saying that that person seemed like they were acting weird, and it was not hard to say that a woman was acting weird back then. You just had to catch them, like, doing math or thinking for themselves. If you're a man out there, you goddamn better appreciate your male privilege. I know I do. Women's lower status in society is probably another reason why they are more frequently accused of witchcraft than men, because people were basically just looking for an easy target. And this is unfortunately where we get the second item on our list, the stereotype of the old crone. And this one's really sad, guys. The reason why witches are often depicted as older women is because older women were probably the easiest people to pick on back then. Accusing someone of being a witch was basically picking a fight with someone, and would you rather pick a fight with Hamish Goodbody uh, from the hut next door or his arthritic mother Hagatha? Old women back then probably had very little fight in them. Uh, the fact that they were alive was a miracle. So if someone started accusing them of being a witch, they would probably not have much to say about it other than, please don't kill me, and hey, stop dragging me away. I'm not a witch. The reason that witches are often depicted as hags is probably because people back then were picking on little old nanas. And that is so depressing that I am sad just thinking about it. Now, obviously, being a sweet little lady wasn't the only reason someone might accuse another person of being a witch. It was just the most fun. Uh, any strange behavior could get you accused of witchcraft so long as your accuser tried hard enough. And honestly, sometimes they didn't really need to try all that hard. There were certain groups of people who were acting very strange back then, even by today's standards. And one of those groups of people is where we get the third item of our list, the witch's brew. Now this one comes to us from a very, very, very scary group of people, perhaps the greatest monsters to have ever walked this earth. Herbalists. <coughs> Sorry, herbalists. Herbalists did exist and they did actually make brews. So if you didn't know what was going on back then, it probably wouldn't be that hard to believe that they were engaging in some sort of ritualized magic, particularly if you were on the hunt for the Bride of Satan. That said, what herbalists were making was probably closer to science than magic. Uh, they were likely making one of two things with their herbs, either remedies to heal themselves or intoxicants to get fucked up. And strangely enough, the intoxicant parts of that is where we get the fourth item on our list, the witch's broom. This is one I wasn't expecting. One of these things that these herbalists were likely making were hallucinogens, but those hallucinogens weren't things that they would be able to ingest because it would make them sick and also probably wouldn't taste that good either. Uh, that said, they still wanted to get high because wouldn't you? So they came up with other ways uh, to get it into their bloodstreams, one of which involved taking the tip of a broomstick, uh, dipping it into their concoction, and then shoving that broomstick up 
a part of their body that uh, I am too much of a gentleman to say out loud, uh, but you can guess what I'm talking about. It was their vaginas. God damn it, history's gross, huh? Oh well. Of course, no discussion of unfairly maligned peoples from history would be complete without at least saying Jews one or a hundred times. So let's do that now by bringing up the fifth item on our list, the pointy hat. Accusing someone of witchcraft essentially meant calling out anyone who didn't fit the Christian ideal, and no one was less Christian to these people than Jewish people. As such, as history went on, our perception of witches began to take on what you would consider stereotypically Semitic features. This is unfortunately where the witch got her large nose that she's often depicted with, and this is where she gets her pointy hat. Back in the 13th century, there was a law that required Jewish people identify themselves by wearing a uh, so-called Juden hat, and uh, while it didn't look exactly like uh, what you might think of as a witch's hat, uh, it probably is where this aspect of the myth comes from. Saying that makes me feel kind of icky about wearing this thing, um, and I would take it off, except, uh, like I already said, it looks good as hell on me. I'm almost out of time here, guys, but before I go, I just want to take a second to say that what I told you today was a very broad explanation of the witch myth, and it is by no means the only explanation of the witch myth. There are a lot of alternate theories uh, to explain the stuff that I explained today, and if you have some of those, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, even if they contradict me, I would love to hear them because I'm sure that they are on some level kind of right. Uh, I think at the end of the day, the thing that I learned researching this is that Witches come from a lot of places, and witches were a lot of things. When we look at the face of a child dressed up for Halloween as a witch, what we're actually looking at is years and years and years of outsiders who were told by society that they were bad. Witches are anyone who didn't fit in. We may think of them as monsters, but the truth is, had we been born in a different time or place, I or any one of you watching this probably could have been accused of being a witch. And we wouldn't have even needed to put broom drugs up our poons to do it. Although it wouldn't hurt. I'm Willie Muse, and this was The Spooky Show. See you later, ghouls.